Brandon, I mean, obviously the big injury everyone's been following for the past year is Aronde and his recovery. Can you just kind of talk about how, I guess, cooperative he was in the whole process and working through this whole kind of nine months with him and getting him back to where he is today? Yeah, Aronde is pretty much the perfect patient. Um, I almost had to kick him out of the training room at times. So always on time, hard worker, very good communicator. So it makes it easy for us to um, get him back in the weight room, right, and then return to play from there. So, um, I mean, if, I wouldn't wish this injury upon anybody, but he was a really easy one to work with. How has, like, your staff's relationship changed? If it's changed at all with this new strength and conditioning staff that's come in? Yeah, uh, communication is perfect, I'd say. Um, Coach Smith, JB, Nick, Coach Hicks, um, they're great. We're doing a lot of um, using GPS, right, to, to work our guys back in practice and track the volume throughout the day to help prevent injury. Um, but then just day-to-day -day communications with limitations for you know, shoulder injuries or knee injuries, they're great at keeping the guys working. Um, High-level athletes, they're used to this uh, recovery cycle, right? They, they lift, they get sore, they recover, right? They get protein shakes, sleep, eat, all that stuff. Um, and even though they might be injured or have a limitation, we're still utilizing that recovery cycle, it's still working. When Coach Fran came in, were there specific things he, like, asked you and your staff to do or that you asked of him with his staff or like anything like that like what's your relationship with like with Fran? Yeah um, you know definitely definitely a change from the previous coaching staff. Um, Fran is all about these guys practicing right? and it's my job to make sure that they practice safely. I don't like pulling people out of practice um, unfortunately that's, that's part of what I do right? health and safety is my number one priority. Um, Fran understands that uh, so it's, it's really just conversations. I talk to him multiple times every day, and um, as long as he sees that we're continuing to push these guys and, and not letting them get away with stuff, then, then we're good. So Training camp, you're hearing a lot about toughness and the time and, and all those things. How do you find that balance between what you just said? Like, you want these guys to establish that toughness that they look for, but you're looking out for their best interests. Yeah, I mean, we, we fall back on our training, right? Um, like I said, health and safety is my number one priority. Um, I don't call plays. I'm not a football coach. I am a member of the staff, which Fran has made very clear, and I appreciate that. Um, and, you know, I kind of have, if, if I step in and say, hey, this guy's done or, or whatnot, I just stick to my training, stick to my education, and um, hold my ground. That's, that's my job. You mentioned GPS. Is that kind of yep. the, the most advanced thing that you have now at your disposal that maybe you didn't have five, ten years ago to help you track players? Uh, GPS is great. We're also using um, like force plates in the weight room um, and then Nord board testing to test hamstring strength as well. Uh, that's with um, Fall, a company called Vault. Um, but the GPS on the field, um, we're, we're just starting to really dive into that, right? The more and more practice we get, the more data we collect. So then we can start to see trends. Um, so then it's just analyzing that data and trying to mitigate risk based off of that. But it's, it's a great thing to have. and. It's one thing to have it, but to really look at it and use that data, that's the important part. Anything else? Very easy, Brandon. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you.